Alright guys, good morning. It is June 13th, 2018. It's almost 9 in the morning. And I apologize for not putting out another video yesterday. I wanted to take some time to really kind of go over things here in Hawaii. And that is what this video is going to be based over. However, as on my last video I mentioned we were going to look more at Mauna Loa, at the seismic activity, the gas emissions, and we are. Um, but before we do that, I wanted to go ahead and maybe educate you on how the, the system here at Hawaii actually works, the lava system, give you a little, give you some information about Mauna Loa if you didn't know much about it, um, such as it's the largest and most active volcano we have, or actually I don't know if it's the largest, but I know it's for sure the most active. But here's some, I, I guess I pulled up some fun facts right here from the Smithsonian. Massive Mauna Loa shield volcano rises almost 9 kilo, uh, kilometers above the sea floor to form the world's largest active volcano. Okay, so I was right. Flank eruptions are predominantly from the lengthy northeast and southwest rift zones, and the summit is cut by the Mokowewo caldera, which sits within an older and larger 6 by 8 kilometer caldera. Um, it's been going off. The last eruption was 1984. And uh, I think there's some pictures. Maybe. Yeah, here's some pictures from the 1984 eruption. Or no, this was 1950. I take that back. I'm sorry. This one's from 1984. So this is from 1950 of the eruption of Mauna Loa. Maybe. Okay, you know, I don't have time. You can see them from right here on the side. If you want to look them up, just hit it up. Just look it up in Google. That's. We're going to move past this. Um, one thing I found odd. And I don't know why they don't update information. I mean, the last report they had put in on the website was in 2016. And this is what we're really going to be looking at today is the INSAR um, radars. And this hasn't been updated since, I mean, a long time. 2006? I think, I think that's what it says. I mean, it's been ages. And I don't, as I said, I don't understand why they're not updating it. I have... Uh, 2018 all the way up to today's date of the NSAR yet they can't update anything it's, it's been here since like 2006 um, I will now show you and kind of let you kind of give you a rundown of how everything works here in uh, Hawaii so here's a good depiction a good model of like how so uh, and this model depicts it because I don't know how where the actual main lava plume underneath the underneath the crust and stuff forms I don't know what the depth is on this chart it looks like it starts around 10 kilometers and it goes all the way down to 80 um, on some they show it starts around 30 kilometers so it's I don't have an actual accurate reading of where it starts or where it ends but I have a decent area of where it's about you know the about area um, Kilauea and as you know they're the two most active volcanoes um, this is why the whole reason I was making this video because I mean they are the two are connected now whether they've, they've done studies proving that if one goes the other one is not necessarily going to go um, and I don't know if it is or not I, I've been looking over the stuff all morning I am kind of in a I don't know I really don't know what's going on over there there is obviously movement there's ground deformation going on but ground deformation is very popular it's been it's been going on for that's 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 what happens on the Hawaiian Islands that's what happens with volcanoes in general land around it deforms it, it's just a natural process that happens um, I'm first I'm also going to explain since I said we're going to go back over to here and actually start viewing stuff but I want to kind of give you a rundown of what the tools that I'm using what they actually do and how you can go on yourself and read them yourself so we'll for, we'll be all we're we'll looking at GPS monitors which are these little blue lines relatively inexpensive GPS receivers like those in vehicle navigation systems smartphones and handheld units um, can determine the position on earth surface to within a few meters so they're really good to have you know you place them around you can kind of figure out what's moving you know it's something you want on a volcano site uh, INSAR INSAR the Inframet Inframet eh, Interferomero in Interferometric Synthetic Aperture Radar is a technique for mapping ground deformation using radar images of the Earth's surface that are connected from orbiting satellites. Unlike visible or infrared light, radar waves penetrate most weather clouds and are equally effective in darkness. 
So with Ansar, it is possible to track ground deformation even in bad weather and at night, which are two big advantages during a volcanic crisis. I apologize for the slip up in the beginning. Um, and then this is also because we also take a look at the seismographs. So this will kind of help you understand what the different, what it looks like on a seismograph. Because you have different things. You have, you know, these are distant earthquakes. So they're not as big, but it still picked it up. You have your debris flows, is one constant. Uh, your tectonic plate, and I'm still learning how to actually tell the difference. Because I mean, you see this, and then when you go look at a, at a graph, it, I mean, it's still really hard to tell the difference. But this should help you. Um, before we get to looking at the map, I want to go over the 2018 INSAR radars we have. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to read these. They're super easy uh, from color wise. So from left to right, we're going to go away from satellite, which means it's going down or it's going to the east. Okay, so if you see a dark blue, this means this is either going down or it's moving to the east because these track. And okay, so if it's in the red, it means it's towards the satellite, it means it's moving upwards or it's moving west. So the ground's either lifting up or the ground's going down or the ground's going east, the ground's going west. That's how we're going to read this, okay? So light blue, dark blue is down or east. Red and, you know, whitish red is either moving up or it's going west, okay? Um, and that's on these pictures. Now on these, this is, this indicates ground motion. So it, zero is going to be about like that. And uh, all the way up to about three centimeters is going to be red. Okay, so this is this first image was 420 to May 2nd. Okay, this is before really this is right when we started having action. So I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward. I wanted you to look at look at the areas around uh, Mauna Loa and Kilauea, so you can kind of pay attention to the ground deformation, how it raises, and how much it actually starts changing. And same over here, both. You just take. I'm gonna try to do this nice and slow, so you can kind of compare. And then I'm going to compare the rat, the two at the very bottom. But I'll let you kind of do this on your own. Kind of give you a... And this is this is up to uh, May 5th to May 8th right here. May 8th to the 14th. May 11th to May 17th right here. This is May 14th to the 20th. 17th to the 23rd notice these ring starts I'll explain that in a second which isn't a bad thing I mean like I said none of this is bad this is all natural this is all natural it's all about tracking and what's actually you know the differences of what's actually happening though so we're gonna go a little faster now to the bottom here we are this is the most recent I can get right now this is the 10th this is the recent radar so before we get to the main map, start tracking our radar and our GPS and stuff. This is very important in my opinion so we can actually see the ground deformation from the sky and not just from what I'm going to show you on the GPS monitors because a lot of the GPS monitors and stuff that the USGS provides, you can't get a, a legit reading off it because in science, you want to be able to duplicate and to be able to check your answer. And if one of these doesn't work and I want to check the other one and that one doesn't work and if this one doesn't work, how am I supposed to get an accurate answer I don't know if this is accurate so if all of them are out therefore I can't get a positive reading on that and so if I come over here I can't get a positive reading over here. I want to do this one can't get a positive reading out of that so it's very important that I can at least break down the information that INSAR gives me because it still gives me ground movement so that that works um, so over here we can see it's moving away from the satellite so over on this side it looks like it's dipping this is moving up this whole area over here is moving not much, but it is moving up uh, around um, 10 kilometers. Well, actually, it's kind of hard to tell in some areas. It can move up almost 100 kilometers. Um, we will, or millimeters, I apologize, not kilometers, millimeters. Um, so we look over here. This is Mauna Loa. It doesn't look too bad. I mean, right at the main uh, crater, there's no main lift or anything. On the outside, though, and I want to compare and contrast to just earlier how it was. See, we had bands and rings, and this was uh, 29 to the 4th. So we had active, we were having earthquakes and stuff over there. And it doesn't look, it looked like the ground moved, 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 shifted. 
And now we're at a whatever this, because the whole ground is moving now. This whole, and this is on the outside of the cold air. So all this is moving. This back here is moving. I, I don't know what area, because I mean, this is moving. Almost everything in this picture right here is moving, but it's all, it's super, super slow, which isn't uncommon. But why? Why is it moving? Why is it moving up? Because it's ready to do another eruption? Is it moving from natural causes? Is lava coming up? Um, and we'll give you, I'll give you another look at so, so as you can see, it's around, you can see how the two work together. Um, I'm going to track, what's the thing on this radar right now? I'm tracking it so it's only tracking the deep earthquakes, okay? So this was, this is a week, so right here, and this is kind of, I want to say, this is kind of the split zone we're looking at right there of where the magma, uh, the magma plume probably is and where the channels are. Um, but uh, don't freeze on the computer. Thank you. Um, I just know it's going to be deeper than what it's actually. I, actually, I don't know. I don't know. I said, I wish I actually knew how deep it was because these two models give me two different answers. So it's very hard for me to depict how deep, how, how deep I need to be looking. If I should be tracking... 10 depth if I should only be tracking 20 plus I need to be able to get an action you know an accurate depiction of what's going on of course this thing froze and that's another thing I'm sick and tired of this USG it's not optimized for people who actually want to do data research and who actually want to use it and it's it's disgusting I mean it, you can't sit there and do half the stuff you want to look at you can't do half the stuff you want to do this thing freezes it breaks it doesn't load half the stuff you want it to you know it's 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 sad which I, I'm glad they have. We have other countries that put out information for us because I mean, if we had to rely on just the USGS to provide us with information, we'd be screwed. In my opinion, I, I mean, of course, like I said, I can be wrong. You can have your own opinion about the or the about it, but I said I don't like the I don't like them. Okay, so we are now. If, if my computer will stop doing what it's, I just simply want to start checking stuff and uh, get back to this video. All right, so past six hours, I, have, I this is the main one I had checked. I noticed there was a big, I don't know what it was. All of these picked it up. Something. And I thought it may have been a big, there's a ton of seismic activity. So that's one reason why the seismic graphs are kind of hard to look at right now. Oh my God, dude, this thing freezes so bad right now. And I don't have a bad computer. Like, this computer isn't bad at all. I do a lot of my graphic design. I do a lot of stuff on this computer. And I have no issues. It's only on this website. which I And I have it on low filter. Like I said, it's just it's not optimized. Go back over here. So, tilt. As we saw from the ground information charts, we know it's lifting over here. We just said so we can see from the charts, we know it's lifting. We know it's moving. It's red, right here. Okay. So if you, we see that represented right here, okay. Uh, as I said the only downside is we're we're unable to do that everywhere because for some for some reason they haven't went out there and placed half these machines. Oh, where's my insert? So this is on the back side over here, which we know is moving as well. So, we have movement, but whether it's said, I don't know. I, I truly don't know as of right now. And the same with the gas emissions. I, I don't know if gas emissions are always due to what I had thought it was. I thought it was fracturing in the ground, releasing the gas emissions because magma was on its way up to the surface. But we have it over here. And it makes sense why it's. So, I, I don't know. I, said, I don't know why it's in certain places. So, I, I don't know if I was correct about that or not. But. Regardless, as I said, I'm here just to present information to you. You can go a little, di you can dig a little deeper than I am, but you can't dig that much. You can't dig that deep because they don't offer you any way to check it deeper. And this is the USGS. I'm saying they don't provide you with more information. So I would like to know what information they keep from themselves and what information they actually provide to the public because. I can't check half the stuff I'd like to check because the, the machines are down, they're broke, they don't pop up. And like I said, if you if you do the exact same thing I'm doing with these tools, you'll notice more the majority of the stars, the tilt meters, 
And I'm going to say that almost all these guys, none of them. You can't track any of it. So what's the point of it being there? I mean, because it, it, there, it's just, like I said, there's no point. Um, I'll be backing up a little bit and I'll show the day earthquakes. And there's just been so many. But none by Mauna Loa. So that's one thing that kind of gives me hope. Like I said, I don't know what's going on over there. I try to look up the past 1987 eruption of what had caused it. I didn't know if it was an earthquake eruption. Um, what had caused the last eruption at Mauna Loa. And I couldn't find anything. Like it, it, there was no, I couldn't find a reason why it had erupted. So if you know why, if you were along, if you're alive in 1987 when it erupted, and you know why, please comment below and let me know, because I can't find an article or anything telling me why. But as I said, right here, this was a deep. I want to say this was a deep one too. Yeah, it was 19. And so I want to say, but right here, if we cut this like a, you know, right there, and we look straight down for, into the mantle, of the core and stuff, we'd see a lava plume that fuels both of these. I said if we just cut that right there in half we'd see this so we know there's activity going on in the lava plume and but we don't know why I don't know why I don't know what's going on um, we know this is moving but we know this is moving but as I said earlier it's natural what's not natural is rapid rapid deformation okay you know you could tell the difference when the chart spikes up whenever it completely red like off the charts you know something is coming up if it's a slow you know gradual rise it's it's i mean it could still be alarming but it's less alarming than something that's instant that is the best way i guess i could put that um but yeah this is a little more in-depth look into mauna loa and kilauea as i said this is what i wanted to do um i do not think an eruption is imminent i don't see any signs of it i see it's still i still think the greater caldera is going to collapse first and that I don't know what's gonna happen. I mean, it, it, I if, if you get a big enough earthquake, I mean, I really do think they could set off Mauna Loa on itself. But there's no telling. I mean, we've had decent sized earthquakes, but we have to keep in mind the Helena slip is the main issue we're having. Oh, excuse me, and is the main reason why I start putting out these videos. The whole Helena slump still to this day is still getting tons of earthquakes. All within this is the fault system, and this is actually Helena. Um, we've getting we're getting them all on the coast. It's it's and I, as a matter of fact, I'll show you the deformation on that as well. We'll take a look over here on the coast. So if we look at the ground deformation, here's Kilauea, here's Helena, a lot of dark blue, green. Everything over here is green. That's everything. Everything right here is moving. Nothing right here is. Well, we get a little bit of purple right there. But not much, and you—you you be quite. I'll be quite honest. It's kind of hard to read these to guess because if this isn't moving, because it's purple, or if it's barely moving, you know, why is this moving so much? Um, but regardless, we know ground movement is happening. We don't have to know the real specifics, but we do know this is moving. Whether it's moving some areas, it's moving faster than others, which is expected. Um, I don't know the actual how much has been displaced though, which is something I'd really like to know because. Uh, the 6.9 we had on May 4th of this year displaced it by two feet. It made the entire Helena uh, coastline move by two feet. So I'm curious how much it's moved now and how much it's continuing to move. Um, but I'm unable to get that information. So that's about it. I wanted to um, kind of just we'll just do a final look over with maybe without freezing my computer. This is just another day or I've been doing nothing but day looks at Kilauea because you do it any higher, you're going to freeze whatever you're using. There's too many dots. Because uh, on the website right now, there's, there's over 13,000 earthquakes to track in the past month. And that, I mean, that's just ridiculous. Um, as I said the other day, I still think this entire caldera is eventually collapsing in on itself. So make sure you guys stay tuned to that. Um... I don't know what my next video is going to be over. I, I want to continue talking about, I don't know if I'll start looking at Yellowstone, maybe look at the New Madrid Fault. Um, but if you guys have an idea or something, please comment below and uh, I may do that as my next video. But other than that, guys, have a great day. Thank you for watching if you did.